Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and this is my pup Jordy. We live here on this wooden motor cruiser in Victoria, British Columbia, all the while uh, restoring it for some pretty extensive cruising in the future. If that's the sort of thing that might be of interest to you, why don't you stick around and subscribe. Today, we start with a tour. Hey pup. Yes, a proper tour of the boat is long overdue, uh, so let's have a stem to stern, good, bad, ugly, everything you need to know about old MV Geordie. Um, it's a 1953 monk designed tri cabin cruiser built in Nanaimo and uh, built in the heyday of the Carvel boat construction in the Pacific Northwest. She's uh, oak framed, steam bent oak frames, a red cedar above the water line that's tight seam, yellow cedar below. Um, as you can see by the bleeders, sadly she's fastened with galvanized boat nails that are clinched over. So you boaties know the trouble I'm set for. But anyway, let's start with the tour. Starting forward for ground tackle, I have a reasonably heavy Chinese knockoff, which has been awesome. It's never drug on us, but we haven't been in heavy, heavy weather. Uh, 100 feet of chain and 200 feet of road. I would love to have all chain. I put in the stainless steel um, folding bow roller, which makes deployment and recovery super, super easy. The windlasses was on it. Windlass was on it when I got it. It's a chain drive down to a worm box. It works, but I don't trust it. So in time, looking for a new windlass. Um, all the decks, four deck, cabin tops, both cabin tops, had all been fiberglassed at some previous point, and they did a relatively good job. You can even see the roving coming through here and underneath the rub rail. Um, so on the whole, we're in pretty good shape for waterproof at least through the decks. Of course, there's sections here and there where there are some difficulties. Uh, four hatch. Sadly, this boat doesn't have one of the really beautiful cast bronze round Chris Craft style four hatches. It has a wooden replica of such. I don't know if the original one went missing and that was handmade or if it was built that way, but it's sort of a sad thing that needs a little bit of attention. If I swing you around, the windscreen on the wheelhouse, prone to water ingress and water damage, no doubt, and it's been already rebuilt once in Douglas Fir, sadly. They did a reasonably good job, but it's rotting again, so it's going to need some attention. It's not at the point where it needs replacement again, but I do have to get on top of it, uh, because if it gets any worse, it's really going to give me trouble. Um, those of you who know the boat and or have looked back in time at some of the earlier videos will know that the boat was completely painted when I bought it and it had been fared with auto body filler before it had painted so I had no idea what I was going to find under that and well it's not in perfect shape but it's nice enough for me and uh, over time I would improve it more and more. Uh, the dinghy is a seven foot um, Minto rowing dinghy. Can't quite figure out what I'm doing for a dinghy. <laughs> this is also my sad little but aluminum bottomed RIB uh, seven and a half foot that I have a four horsepower uh, four stroke for and that thing skips along quite nicely but I kind of prefer the hard shell but anyway more on that later also have a hard shell Minto nine footer with a sailing rig nice okay so um, one of the really great beauties of the um, Monk tri cabin design is that it's a flush deck so the foredeck is nice and high and wide because of the way it works here. So in fact, my head is right there when I'm doing my office work, video editing, etc. Because the cabin is very wide at that spot down in my little uh, nav station, workstation down below. One of the other really neat features of the tri cabin design is this wheelhouse door. The wheelhouse is set relatively low compared to say a trawler. And it does mean that you can't easily get in and out um, into the wheelhouse, but it does mean at the helm, I can reach out and touch the dock. Really handy for mooring. Hey, let me show you. So imagine I'm just pulling into the slip here, gently bringing her in. I've got my hand on the wheel. My, you know, I can also easily reach the engine controls. And from standing here, I can reach out and touch the dock and make fast with a center line or a spring line. And that makes single handing a 38 foot wooden motorboat very, very easy. I can also pick up a mooring ball just as easily without even a boat hook. Slip my line through that's coming back, put a ball in, in and I'm set. Pretty cool. As we move aft, we move to a very interesting part of the boat, at least for me. This is the transition between the wheelhouse cabin and the aft cabin, which is six inches wider and lower, of course. Now, 
At some point, there was some major water ingress problem here and some rot because all of this wood is not original. Uh, someone would have put that on to repair where the ends of the original mahogany cabin sides had been damaged in this corner. Uh, I can see the evidence of that on the inside as well, and it's been, you know, relatively well repaired. But I like to modify this a little bit because I don't really like the shape of the way the two cabins meet. And amazingly enough, a friend of mine, thank you, Owen, who is also a wooden boat, uh, in fact, he's a monk owner, uh, did some research and I think found a very, very early picture of MV Geordie. Of course, it wasn't called that then. From 1955, it was on the cover of a magazine. And if it's not this boat, it is certainly her sister vessel. Let's show you a picture. That's definitely her, I'm sure of it. Anyway, you can see in the picture that it has a completely different um, bridge deck arrangement here. Uh, largely the same windshield arrangement, but further aft it's different and there's some combing or something going on, I'm not quite sure. What it doesn't explain is what really happened here. I can't see in enough detail. But what I have in mind is to continue the uh, wheelhouse cabin in a curve back down to meet the aft cabin. So this brow line would come down in a curve. This curved section of the cabin side would come down and meet right there. And this cabin side mahogany would carry through inside that. And I can show you a picture of what that looks like because I did a little Photoshop. There you go. I think that'll look pretty good. And I'll remove some of this and try to graft in. I'll uh, scarf in some Honduran mahogany, which I can get some. And I think that'll make that look pretty nice. Okay, now speaking of the bridge deck, or what I call the bridge deck, I'm pretty sure that's incorrect. I think, although it's known as a bridge deck cruiser, I think that actually refers to the arrangement of the wheelhouse. However, I don't really like calling this a flying bridge, because a flying bridge is normally on top of the wheelhouse in like, like a trawler, and I think this is much more elegant. So I'm gonna call it a bridge deck, and if any of you know what it's actually called, there's the coho. Um, I'd very much like to know. So then in the meantime, bridge deck it is. And as you can see, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast right now. Certainly the stainless steel bimini and stanchions for the rail are not original and not appropriate, although the bimini is a godsend. Um, certainly not helping with my cheapo Costco garden furniture, but it's also a godsend. Anyway, the plywood for this is obviously finished, but the general proportion, shape, and windows I'm going to retain and rebuild, and I think it'll look great with this piece coming in here. Another plane. You know, this place is a paradise, and the planes are annoying until you start to shoot video, and then they're incredibly annoying because, frankly, every five minutes. Anyway, I can cope with that. Okay, back to the cabin side a little bit. Uh, some of you will notice this not particularly marine-looking window. Yes, it's basically an RV sliding window in a plastic frame um, that someone quite neatly put some wood trim over. Works fine. I'm just fine with it. I'll replace that in time. This window's into the head. I'm glad it has an open window, and on the opposite side, the head of my bed is there. Uh, also, very nice to have an opening window. Let's move out. Okay, here's some good and bad and ugly no doubt about it. Um, at some point in the not too distant past, someone had replaced all the rub rails, the tow rails, and the strakes in teak, and they did a really, really good job. I'm very grateful for it. They also did some new teak um, combing here, which they did a good job. The transom is in pretty rough shape. I keep thinking I can save it, but in fact, it's got to be replaced at some point. There are just so many bungs, so many screws, so many soft edges. And this, amazingly enough, is the edge grain of some plywood that was nailed to the top of the transom with steel nails. That's all the blackness. And anyway, I do need a new door, uh, which I'll have to build uh, sometime in advance of building a new transom because I can't wait that long. The cockpit itself, for those of you who've been following along, has been an immense amount of work over the last year or so. Um, when I bought the boat, it had been completely fiberglass. Everything, the sole, the uh, bulkhead, up the sides, up the back of the transom, and it had some fiberglass hatches in it, and it was just a mess. And underneath all that fiberglass was rotten wood. Some of it was not old, original wood, and some of it was the original bulkhead of the boat. So everything had to go, including the entire bulkhead. Those of you who watched along, the entire aft cabin of the boat opened. It was, it was terrifying to slide through it, but it's done. So new three quarter inch marine plywood uh, bulkhead that's been saturated in clear penetrating epoxy sealant should last a long time. And I planked it with this uh, mahogany. I really enjoyed that. Uh, built all new structure for the sole. Uh, tanks are all reconfigured, all new plumbing down there, uh, all new thwarts here. 
and uh, storage lockers and this has gone so well I've enjoyed it really really have um, in time I'll have to put down a teak deck in here and um, just have to win the lottery first that's all speaking of teak not speaking of teak the swim grid is delightful except it's fiberglass with a stainless steel fish locker neat eh to somebody maybe so I've got to make a new swim grid at some point there's a few bucks in teak but upcoming project right yeah for those of you who aren't familiar with it the door is actually only about a year older um, I built it about a year and a half ago, uh, but never got it finished properly, so it needs to be refinished and it'll match the Sapelli mahogany perfectly because that's what it is. The stair is original, uh, ladder, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I'll be building a new one shortly ish. Let's go. Okay, for all its modern bimini and costco garden seating and tubs of various junk to keep up here this is still a very very pleasant place to spend an afternoon absolutely love it up here and i effectively live here most of the summer now currently this is just a terrace but um, originally there was a helm a steering station up here on the port side i'm going to rebuild that um, dead center and um, a little simpler and because I want to put um, benches down both sides at least up here behind the windshield and they'll face each other and there'll be a chair that can come and actually operate the helm although a lot of the times that I imagine driving from up here I'm either um, in, in tight quarters where I'll be standing or you can actually I will just sit sideways and it's not like driving a car you don't have to sit directly behind the wheel anyway I think that'll work out just fine in time again some sort of appropriate uh, sunshade bimini uh, with wood bows and not green not soon so there's a quick overview of what MV Jordy is like now and what I have planned for her in the next little while and what I have planned for her in the not so little while um, the nice thing about a wooden boat is it's perpetual projects for some people that might not be a good thing but for me it's wonderful I just love love the prospect of being able to work on this boat literally for as long as I'm a boarder, which as far as I can tell will be the rest of my life. Hey Bob, what do you think? Hope you can join me for lots of that. Let's go inside. All right then, let's carry on with the tour inside. And most of you are familiar with the wheelhouse. Uh, we've just done the work to the bulkhead and the cabinet there. You'll notice in my very stylish uh, Craigslist uh, $45 table and chairs, need to have something to sit on anyway um let's go forward and just get this over with shall we okay so here we are in envy jody's foxhole now this is an amazing foxhole foxhole just in case you're not familiar with it is a concatenation of forward castle foxhole two apostrophes in that word anyway um it's a fabulous space when i first got the boat it basically had a single berth both sides i've taken out the one on this side to build a mock-up of a nav station uh, that i'll eventually set up here and it's where i do all my work it's quite functional actually i love working here i even have a little port light i can see out very nice the monitor can swing around um, so that you can watch tv or whatever it is you want to do in bed here and uh, frankly it's it's just been fantastic i also got a hanging locker out of it which is very very handy to port we have the last remaining uh, built-in cabinetry on the whole boat um, so there were two singles one each side but i moved the companionway door over this foot it used to come from here to here and i moved it over a foot as some of you may remember so that i could widen uh, the bunk on this side so this bunk will come all the way to here making it as wide as a double at the head end of course it'll still be pretty skinny at the foot end but basically effectively a v-berth giving it tons of storage underneath um, again it's almost full standing headroom in here which is pretty good certainly full standing where the fore hatch is now this boat actually has a head forward which is amazing i want to show you <laughs> Standard cleaning up bachelor mode. It is completely packed full of junk. I mean, where do you put all your junk but in your spare bathroom, right? Forward of that is the chain locker, which is also um, quite cavernous. Now, um, lots to go on in here, but this is so many projects down the line. Uh, even the whole foxhole is a next winter project, but this will all be redone, all in beautiful mahogany, all new overheads. Um, as you can see, 
And when I did the uh, companion way hatch here, I cleaned up one of the deck beams here and it's um, Douglas fir. It'll look so nice all cleaned up. The overheads that were in here before, I don't know if you can see, have tiny little LED lights in it. Yeah, pretty, pretty tacky. It's pretty funny to turn those on. I think there's five different wallpapers in here, all sort of English country themed. Anyway, lots to do in here, no doubt, but um, a really neat space that I'm really, really pleased with. Okay, let's move aft. Okay, yes, and you're all familiar with the wheelhouse slash shop. Notice no more light, it's gone. Okay, so as you know, I moved the companionway to the right, uh, giving me much more room on the port side and much less on the starboard side. The helm had been on the port side, moving it to starboard side, making it quite a tiny little helm area, and uh, but that'll be just fine, 24 inches is plenty. Um, that allowed me to do a couple of things. It allowed me to have the double bunk uh, forward, and it also allowed me to put a much bigger settee in over here. This is actually a massive space. Um, it's going to be sort of a modular settee. Some sections of it will move around and adjust in different ways. More on that later, but it'll all be in the same theme, sort of mission style, arts and crafts style, uh, deep wood. Um, I'm really looking forward to making it, and it'll also be up on a plinth. In other words, you won't be sitting down at this height, which in this boat I find it's just a little low. It's just, like you can barely see out the windows. It'll be up about 10 inches. Anyway, really looking forward to that. Forward. I mentioned a helm. Um, on the port side, this four foot section will have a matching cabinet that'll actually end up being the pantry uh, for the galley, which is in this space. So galley, yes, well, huh, again, a mock-up, a year and a half old. Uh, it'll be largely as it is now, except all in nice mahogany, uh, mahogany countertops. I have a brand new uh, Force 10 stove, which I just love. Uh, sink with a uh, sideboard splash, drain board, whatever you want to call that. Ikea, super cheap, super awesome. Um, I'm using a really, really cheap uh, bar fridge type thing for now, but that space will get used um, for a custom fridge that I'll build. So, lots to go on here. I'll also have a swing up uh, a counter extension because, of course, 18 inches of countertop is just so bachelor, isn't it? But anyway, that'll be really good. I can't live here permanently because you have to be able to have really good access uh, to that window for uh, operating the boat, but when you're not operating the boat, that'll be fine. I'm, I'm really excited about all this. I've given it so much thought, it's ridiculous. Anyway, um, that's about it in here. Let's move aft. Well, um, I've pretty much converted the entire aft cabin into a bedroom, which for a liveaboard boat is sort of appropriate. It had been um, kind of chopped up before. The, the galley was there. There was a dinette here that was really small and just horrible. And to starboard, there was a settee with a fold-up back that created sort of bunk beds. Basically, it was set up as a weekender boat, which was perfectly appropriate for the time. But as a liveaboard, I love this setup. Regular, residential, double mattress, cozy as anything. I love being so close to that window that can open, sit up, drink my coffee in bed. <laughs> now, something I've never actually shown anyone is these little slide-out coffee cup shelves. Um, I whipped those up the same weekend I built the magnetic knife holders for MV Zephyrus and uh, as that particular project didn't seem to be very popular I decided let's not do any more of those little craft projects. Anyway, so what's going to happen in here? Obviously the bed is where it's going to be. It'll all have built-in uh, cabinetry below with tons and tons of storage. In this area here against the bulkhead from here and forward to just aft of the window will be a large wardrobe, hanging locker, locker etc. All in mahogany and I'm really excited about that. I've got it mostly designed and that'll be an upcoming project. Where this chair is will be a small upholstered bench. You know, the kind of thing you can sit down and pull your shoes on type of thing. And uh, so that'll work out fine. Over to starboard. This will be largely, as you can probably imagine, a big credenza dresser type of thing. Mahogany top. This will all be drawers, basically for clothing. And at the aft end, there'll be one of those little combined washer dryers. I'm really excited about that. I'm tired of going to the laundromat. Um, just got to be able to afford it. Um, one really neat thing about these drawers is because the deck exceeds another 14 inches out there, these drawers can be almost 30 inches deep. So there's tons and tons of storage here. Just really, really going to love that. Okay, the head I think I've shown you before. Somebody at some point went to the trouble of completely fiberglassing 
the inside of this head and they did an amazing job. Not the sort of thing that I would take on, I can tell you. Maybe Mads from Sail Life would like to do something like this, but not for me. Um, as a result, it's kind of sterile. It works perfectly. It's a fantastic shower, fantastic in every other way. In time, I'm gonna have to redo the vanity, uh, get a little more wood in here somehow, but I'll have to be able to treat it in such a way that it can deal with being in the shower because the whole room is a shower. Well, there we go. That was indeed the express tour. And uh, it's because I realize that this episode is gonna run long if I go into too much detail about any of this stuff. I will admit, confess, tell you, announce that uh, the big cleanup is because I'm having a guest. Yes, some of you may have guessed, my youngest daughter is coming out for a visit. She's arriving tomorrow. So I had to have the boat relatively civilized for a short visit. And now we should get into some technical stuff. Just a brief section because wooden boats aren't all about cabinetry and layout and basically interior decorating. What they're really about is the scantlings. In other words, the bottom, the part that keeps the ocean out. And we have to have a talk about that. Yes, indeed, it's all very well to spend all my time having fun uh, wood papering the walls and making the place look pretty. But the real work to fixing up a wooden boat has nothing to do with any of this. It has to do with the bottom. Now, when I bought this boat, I had no idea what kind of shape it was in. I knew next to nothing about wooden boats. Well, not nothing, but very, very little. I bought it very cheap and I took a risk. Um, I couldn't check uh, the frames and ribs and, and the planking and stringers very well because there was so much cabinetry in it. But what I did find was remarkably good. I wasn't too disappointed. I've learned an awful lot more about this boat, monks, and boats built in this era since then and I am blessed with this boat. It's an unbelievably good condition uh, considering its age. It was so well built in the first place and that's absolutely, it's a testament to the way they built boats in 1953. So, but there are issues. There's definitely issues and I have to start addressing them. Um, the first problem, although it may not be a problem and the wooden boat guys out there, people out there will let me know, it's fastened with uh, galvanized steel nails, um, which are all, uh, as far as I can tell, holding very, very well. I have no uh, sagging planks. A very, alignment is very good. I can't find any place that planks are coming off the frames. Uh, I do have a few bleeders. Well, bleeders are to be expected in a certain amount, especially when they've been messed with before and they've ground off any remaining galvanizing. Um, I'll have to deal with that. The fact that the nails are clinched over on the frames on the inside makes it very very difficult to refasten and again I'm going to be doing further research on that. I don't have to refasten now that I know of anyway but in time obviously I have to start thinking about that. Okay too much information about fastening. Um, the frames would be the next major concern and it's chronic for the frames the ribs to crack at the sharp bend uh, at the turn of the bilge and the boat does have some that have cracked. They're not broken, split, whatever, but I can tell that the shape has got too sharp of a bend in it to be naturally steam bent at that angle. So I'm a little concerned there's some places where there may, may be some loss of strength in there. It's not opening up the plank or anything. It's certainly not bad, but some sistering is in my future. I have some plans for that, and I'll share all that with you in the future. Um, Next thing on the bottom would be the planks themselves. Uh, the bottom is planked with yellow cedar below the waterline, and it's an excellent wood, very, very you know resistant to rot. Um, I've had the boat out, I've pounded on all over, I've had my surveyor all through it. We can't find a bad plank. Doesn't mean in time there isn't stuff already starting. The really dirty word with wooden boats is delignification from iron sickness. Sometimes it's also from bad bonding. Bonding being where all the ground, all the metal in the boat are connected together electrically, uh, which is in a fiberglass boat or ostensibly a safety feature. In wooden boats, it spells death. Um, on the whole, that seems to be the understanding and that's the way I'm looking at it. So I've undone all the bonding. I have found some localized problems with delignification where I've dealt with it with uh, clear penetrating epoxy sealant. Will there, is there going to be a lot more trouble with that? I don't know. But again, that's something I'm going to have to start to deal with and consider for the bottom. Last thing, anything that any of you who watched me change the engine, put the engine in, know that the engine beds 
are in nasty shape and the floors which are the beams that cross over between the frames on both sides where the engine is have been cut out drastically so there's no strength in there we'll wait for the plane so that I know it's not going to be too long before I have to deal with that and I have some plans for that too all of which I'll share with you in the future and there's lots of interesting stuff to do. Sorry about bringing all that in, it's kind of long winded and dry but it's important to note that the fun stuff is really only cosmetic. The important stuff is yet to be done. I was able to put it off a little bit and make the boat a little more comfortable in the meantime because nothing is absolutely desperate but it's going to have to be dealt with sooner or later. Cheers! Uh, what is turbid? turbid? Turbid means junk in it. <laughs> is that an engineering Webster's term? Webster's definition. Yeah, junk <laughs> turbid, in the beer. Junk in beer. Junk in beer. <laughs> Hello, well, welcome to Beer of the Week. And most importantly, welcome to my daughter, <laughs> Caitlin, who's come to visit. Okay. I think I might have given you a little clue to that. Anyway, she's here for... Who knows? A while? <laughs> well, as long as long as I can. <laughs> yeah, excellent. And this is her first time here in summer, so we're on the bridge deck enjoying some sun. She's come to visit me a couple of years for Christmas, and well, it's it's better now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. We've just been to Spinnakers because everyone who comes to visit had we go IPA. straight. You had an IPA, exactly. So we're gonna try an IPA, another IPA, one we haven't tried before. Um, Phillips, local brewery, right around the corner here. Again, we can't. Caitlin, what the heck is that? Like <laughs> the. the it's an elephant with a knot in its trunk, and A M M. Is that is that a, a big no amne amnesiac 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 right? An elephant never forgets yeah. amnesia. Anyway, it's a double IPA. I've never had it before. Let's fire this up and see very what we turbid. think of it. It's very turbid, as we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. which means it does need the dedicated pour. So let's have a go. Right. Let's pour out a little bit and then give it the swill. Is it going to be carbonated? <laughs> There we go. So far, I'm, now I'm going to give it the swill. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Whoops. That's a, <laughs> that's a little much. Okay, what were you planning there? I was just smelling it. The I smell. Well, there's your own to smell. Okay, Tell me what you think of that. Sounds good. Um, yeah, it poured it's up smell. a little more head on it than I was planning on at the yeah, end it's there. it's good. It's good. It's good. Okay, so Caitlin, you a big beer drinker? I'm, I'm a medium beer drinker. Medium beer drinker? I, which yeah. is pretty funny because we haven't lived together for a couple of years now. And <laughs> I think this is the second beer I've ever had with her, and the first was an hour okay, ago. Okay, because when we first started drinking, it was always coolers. Right. So, you know, I which think is what, I, I have grown up. I've which grown is what girls in high school drink. Which is, okay, that's fair. No. <laughs> cheers All right, to cheers. Amnesiac from cheers Phillips. Amnesiac. We'll see. I like it. Excellent. Yeah. I like it too. I, I like it a lot. Actually, I don't like Phillips beer, but this is really kind of yummy. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a novel, novelty la uh, label and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for okay. sure. It, yeah, We're I mean, putting that on the list. Okay, so absolutely, Phillips Amnesiac. That's absolutely a fine beverage to try out. Love it. So while I'm at it, I will cheers Don Gray for coming on this week as a new patron. Thank you so much. So grateful to have you aboard. we got a busy week ahead, eh? We do. We sure do. Some crazy stuff. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. Stick around. See you next week. <laughs> It's good! It's great, honestly, yeah. Oh.